Hey guys, Tibble here. Today we got a look at the Tallinn Tier 6 Russian Cruiser of the new branch. There's Makarov. This is the build we got in this game. Makawa, Von Essen, aka Dmitry Dewey. We got a little bit of concealment, a little bit of a boost to our already good AP penetration. We got enhanced penetration angles on this line and the AP performance overall pretty solid. Noticing some accuracy issues creeping into the line the higher up we get. Tallinn, you'll probably see some of that in this game, and then Riga starts to spray a little bit. So when we look at the Riga, I don't know, tomorrow or whenever it is, I'll show you the new build that I'm testing out on that one uh, to compensate. Uh, here we got a game, Sea of Fortune, Domination Mode game. Now this is going to be a hard-fought game, and a pretty good Domination Mode game overall, but we're going to be checking out uh, the Riga, or the sorry, the Tallinn here. And you saw briefly the armor view a uh, moment ago. It's not the strongest armor. You can angle against cruisers in general. We do have a icebreaker uh, nose section, which you see these on a lot of the Russian ships. Very strong, basically impenetrable armor in the front, but on the bottom half of the nose. So uh, keep that in mind. If you can get these ships in close, potentially you can use that and maybe even angle against some battleships. Um, but for sure, cruisers, uh, you'll be able to protect yourself. Here we got a Mayhem uh, playing in the sea. That's where we're spawning here. I'm going to just see, hopefully, what he can spot here. We also have another destroyer, the Bovoy, coming over from the middle. Uh, not playing B for whatever reason. And we only have two destroyers, so it would be much more profitable for the Bovoy to recognize, okay, we got spotting on the east side of the map due to the Mayhem being here. Maybe I'm going to go a spot in between A and B, for instance, or maybe uh, push into A or B and contest those caps right off the bat. So we're just kind of getting in a position here. Going to be trying to rely on the island cover as best as possible. If you've been playing this new line, the Katowski, uh, the Gorky, these are, speaking of the Gorky, there's one over there. Uh, very fragile ships. We get a little bit more sturdy Tallinn and Riga, but we still don't want to be taking a lot of, of damage if we don't have to be. So uh, utilize the islands whenever you can here. We do have classic Russian cruiser kind of movement performance huge turn circles uh you know kind of clunky in that regard so you know if you get caught in the open water with that sort of setup then you can get into trouble so we're trying to pull back here you see we drop spot here to gross and the gorky both pushing in here now we're just going to test these shots out they're both if you look on the map they're basically pointing bait uh, right at us so i mean these aren't going to be that reliable usually but the gorky we know from playing that ship pretty uh weakly armored so we go ahead and shoot at him over the DeGrasse even though DeGrasse is pushing a little bit forward keeping an eye on both of them okay if they flash the broadsides we're going to go ahead and whack them with the guns and uh, show them why they don't want to do that around the telling uh Gorky continuing to push in here now the Mayhem's flushed out of sea you can see him crossing into B there and I think he got uh hit by that destroyer that now pops up on B so Unfortunately, we lose the destroyer that spawned over here. We do have the bull voice still. He's kind of hanging out in the back. I don't know what's going on there. But technically, we do have a destroyer over here. And then you can see the lack of the destroyer, the effects it's having on A. I mean, even though those guys are being aggressive, they're trying to contest the cap. They got a lot of ships in the back shooting them. Uh, so that's going to make it more difficult for those guys. So down goes the Gorky. Okay, we're down a ship at this point in time. Losing B. We just lost it there. We're losing C. Got some problems. DeGrasse coming around here. We popped the radar. Hoping to get this Icarus spotted here. And there he is. Go ahead and get those guns. We have the AP loaded. Don't matter. Go ahead and shoot it. We'll get some damage. And, of course, uh, we immediately switch over to HE. Radar on the Russians, though. Very short duration. Usually pretty good distance. I think this radar on this one is uh, 9 kilometers. But very short duration in general. So you're really only going to get one shot off. It's nice if your team can chime in and hit some... Shots while well, you get them spotted, but, you know, when you're playing solos, randoms, like I normally do, can't really rely on that very uh, consistently. DeGrasse coming around here. Uh, broadside, we do have the AP loaded for that situation. Uh, backing up a little bit. Steeply angled. You can see in the diagram there to protect ourselves. And whack. There's the DeGrasse taking a big shot there. Take him for about half his health. And now he's like, okay, I better angle towards the Tallinn. And the guy to the north of him uh, gives him a whack there. So this is the... We're always talking about creating separation with our teammates, and this is the advantage. Okay, he's pushing into two cruisers, but they're spaced enough that they can't possibly protect themselves from both at the same time. So good play there with the other cruiser. Now we basically have C clear. Okay, we still have that destroyer running amok over there. Uh, he's suicide rushing the Dunkirk. Looks like he whacks him there. Uh, 
you know, congratulations, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I'm more concerned about the Indianapolis back there. He's been kind of behind the island, so he's relying on the spotting of his team. If we can take the destroyer out, that'll kind of render the Indianapolis relatively useless, just because he's going to have to start spotting for himself, which, of course, makes him get out into the open. And the Indianapolis doesn't really do that well when it's in the open. So we're hoping to get that uh, destroyer off the board as quick as possible. Bolvoy is moving into C now, so it's good. He's finally starting to go after one of these caps, and hopefully he can spot the Icarus and we can go ahead and take him off. Nice shot there, Leander. I don't know if he was briefly spotted or if that was a blind shot, but uh, good job taking the Icarus off. That should clear the way for the Bolvoy now. He does have to continue to remember that the Indianapolis is a radar cruiser, and it actually has the longest uh, distance American radar, at least. I think it's a 10 even kilometers, if I remember. So he doesn't want to be too uh, carefree when moving into C. You know, the, the cruiser might say, okay, C is being captured. Now we know the destroyer is probably on there. And maybe I'm going to pop around the, the edge of the island he's hiding behind, pop the radar, blast the guy, and make a strong play that way. You can see we're actually up in ships at this moment. Down in score, though. They've had B the entire time generating income in the background. We're still working on getting some caps here. So I'm trying to support this Bovo. He is on C. Uh, finally trying to capture the base, that'll even up the background score, okay? Because right now their lead increases, or, you know, even though they're down, their background points uh, lead increases. But if we can get C here, then we're each generating points at the same rate, and that uh, threat of losing on the score diminishes. Then we can start focusing on maybe taking out these guys. Indianapolis, I thought he was going to back up there, so we ended at the back of the ship, hoping to hit him right in the middle. He, uh, unfortunately for us, guns the engine, forward doesn't completely dodge but we don't get quite the uh nasty shot that we were hoping for but he continues to push around here now we do have some pretty good support we got guys in b who are working on flipping that base but you can see shots coming into this indianapolis so recognizing the situation number one he doesn't have torpedoes number two he's isolated and we can protect ourselves pretty well from his guns you know you can still getting some damage there even though we're angled but uh, i'm not I'm not that afraid of this guy, and if he gets really close, we do have torpedoes. He doesn't, like we mentioned, so potentially we can get some torps in there. Waiting for him to maybe try and disengage. In the meantime, we're going to be aiming for the front turrets there, trying to knock them out. Uh, if we miss the turrets like we did there, or at least we don't knock them out, well, those shots will hit the superstructure, that's good, reliable damage. So we keep the AP loaded here. You can make a case for HE, but I want the AP available just in case that broadside does become uh, readily available. Uh, so he continues to kind of basically push us. I don't know if he's thinking ram at this point in time. That's not going to likely work. We do shoot there off the back guns. And whenever you're really close to a ship like that, you got to kind of understand that the angles your shots are going to be coming from differ, whether they're the front guns or the back guns. Okay, so if that, if that last salvo was from the front guns, it probably would have skipped off the nose. Just because those shots would have been coming a little bit steeper. But because they were from the back guns, it was just a little bit more of a horizontal shot. And we were able to go ahead and pluck them off the map. So now we're tied up in ships, but look at the composition. And this is a bit of a problem. We each got the destroyer, right? They got a cruiser. We got three cruisers. Two battleships remain. So advantage in terms of composition goes to red, right? Because we got two battleships. Battleships are born to sink cruisers. And basically they match our destroyer. We match their cruiser. So... You know, it's not looking good in terms of that. We don't want to go into this trying to uh, come out swinging, trying to go in there thinking we're going to sink their whole team because the advantage in that scenario lies with red. But note the torps there, and we're looking for this destroyer who hasn't been spotted on the map, I don't believe, the entire game. So I'm noting him. I'm hoping my team understands the general uh, theory of domination at this point in time. We got the flank. We got the middle cap defended. Now we defend the middle, right? All we have to do is defend B, but I'm going to try and go south, trying to, number one, create space. Number two, see if I can poke a shot in A, get that reset, slow them down even more, because you can see we're actually clawing into the lead now at this point in time. But by going south, I'm also hoping to maybe catch that uh, destroyer unaware. Maybe he's sitting behind one of those islands, doesn't know where I am, and then, okay, we're spotted all of a sudden. Well, maybe we can pop the radar and catch that destroyer and maybe blast him before he can cause any problems. So that's kind of the thinking here. But here's the problem, Fuso, oh boy, he's got full health. We only have half health, and we can no longer push into the ship. Cruisers, you don't want to be pushing into battleships generally, uh, especially if you're going to be engaging them kind of one-on-one. -on -one. 
Uh, you want to be sailing away from them. Kiting is the term. Note they also have a Surrey and that we'll see another battleship pop up behind this Fuso any minute now. So you can see two ships targeting us currently. Uh, looked like three briefly there for a moment. There's the Queen Elizabeth. And this is a bit of an issue, right? So we're going to be trying to dodge these shots. We're sailing away from them, angling every time we see them come in. That's one of the reasons we want to be zooming out. We want to be keeping an eye on shots that are flying through the sky to help us dodge them a little bit. Uh, but this is not looking good. Bovoy uh, guns it. And he's just charging these guys uh, in a time where we desperately need the destroyer. A great play for the destroyer would just be to sit, like, directly below A and B and just keep these guys permanently spotted. Okay, then the cruisers uh, could get behind islands. Doesn't Looks like the guy south of B might be utilizing island cover. Me and the other guy to my, uh, just to the east of me, northeast of me. Both kind of in a kiting formation, which is all right. Um, but, you know, the destroyer, instead he got bored and he just kind of charged those guys and got zapped out of existence. So I don't, kind of an inexplicable play there from the Bovoy. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he comes across this replay and uh, picks up some pointers as to what he could have been doing in this game that would have been a little bit better. Anyway, uh, we're continuing to go south here. The cruiser near us is turning north. That's good. We need space here. And... What am I doing? Well, I'm trying to fight this Fuso. I'm trying to wear him down. We do have teammates chiming in with him, but I'm also trying to draw him and anyone else who dares follow all the way down to Timbuktu, okay? If you keep going, you can't see it on the map, but if we keep going just a little bit further here, that's actually where Timbuktu is located. And if we can get these guys to follow us down there, they're not playing B, they're not playing C, and that allows us to continue to generate, you know, these three points every five seconds that we're gaining in the background lead. Because we got the two caps, they got the one. So we're gaining three points every five seconds. Uh, and the longer we can continue to do that, the better it's going to be for our chances. Because look at what's going on here. I mean, I should be dead at any moment. All they got to do is hit me with the shell in the right spot of the ship, and boom, you know, I blow up. So, you know, I'm trying to do what I can do. If I can kill the Fuso, that'd be a nice 100 points in the bank. That would help the team stay alive there. Trying to make sure these guys are paying attention, pinging B. Um, but, you know, I'm just trying to, if we can draw these guys out of the, out of the relevant part of the map, and we talk about, uh, drawing kind of an oval around the three or four caps, whatever it is, uh, doesn't have to be exactly snug against them, but roughly around those, that's kind of the most important, uh, parts of the map. And then parts of the map like this, where there's no caps down here, there's no real strategic objectives. If we can get any or all of these ships to come down here, well, that's a big, uh, win. So... In situations like this, pulling these guys kind of into positions of irrelevance is a pretty strong play. Surrey coming in hot, though, and I'm worried about him because if he does manage to sink one or two of these cruisers, he's got the speed to get on these caps quick enough to uh, potentially flip the base. And the, the Red Destroyer should be on B, should be on C. Uh, I, we don't really know where he was ever since that one torpedo strike that we saw uh, five minutes ago or whatever it was. Uh, he might be trying to torp me or whatever he's trying to do. Maybe he's sitting there spotting like we were recommending the Bovoy uh, do earlier. But, you know, at this point in time, because they're down and they're losing ground every five seconds, they, they need to flip the cap situation pretty uh, quickly. If you wait too long, as we'll see towards the end of the game here, uh, it just doesn't matter at that point in time. You have to sink all the enemy ships. And having to sink all the enemy ships is a losing strategy. Uh, finally there, we switch over to the AP. We were shooting HE there... Uh, just trying to get the reliable damage, you know, in this entire sequence I've been like, okay, we're gonna die any minute here. But if I want, I wanted to wound that Surrey as best as possible. This is a little bit questionable how you want to play this here. Uh, we elect a turn out here, which is gonna succeed only if the guy misses, right? That's about a 5%, 10% chance. The other option was to continue to sail directly at him, hope the Queen Elizabeth is ignoring me, and hope that the guy's zinging shots off of the icebreaker. We're talking about the lower part of the front nose. That would be pointing directly at him. We could withstand those salvos. But anything that's going on higher than that, upper part of the nose, superstructure, that'll cause damage, you know. And so I rolled the dice, tried to get out of there. Didn't work. Okay, but you got to understand when you show broadside to a battleship within 10 kilometers like that, you should die, right? But we were just kind of forced to make that play. Now we continue to watch this game. It's winding down, less than a minute left, and this cruiser is making the correct play. A lot of players would either continue to just fight because that's all they want to do, or they might be panicking, thinking we got to capture B. 
But if we understand three points every five seconds, uh, that's 36 points you can gain. Okay, so right now, as they're contesting B, both sides are increasing their score lead or their score at the same rate, one cap per. And then when they flip B, they don't have enough time because they're going to get that 36 points. Our lead is much higher than that. It's about 75 points. So getting B at this point in time, irrelevant. So great job by this Cheshire, not uh, falling for common ways to lose games that you do have uh, won. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Bovoy, he finally shows himself here, does shoot. And that's a pretty strong play if, because once again, they have to sink this guy, right? So, you know, a little bit too late here. Right idea, but uh, they, Red almost did close this up. That's how close this game was. But finally, the time runs down and we win on the score there. So good job by the other crews are there to help close that one out. That's a look at the Talleen for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. we got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all later. Peace.